In this video, we'll be discussing how to do calculations with numbers that are written in scientific notation, specifically focusing on addition and subtraction problems and doing these problems without a calculator. Addition and subtraction represent the harder of the four types of calculations that you can do uh, because they require some extra steps. Before we start, let's go over some quick learning objectives. First of all, our primary goal here is to understand and apply the rules for adding and subtracting numbers in scientific notation and being able to do that without a calculator. There will be a video later on that you can use that shows you how to do this with a calculator, but now we want to be able to do these things by hand. Once we get a good understanding of what's going on, the next objective is going to be practice. At the end of this video, there's going to be some practice problems as well as answers provided as well to test to see how well you understood things. Before we start the discussion of uh, addition and subtraction rules, I want to quickly go over the format for numbers in scientific notation. Again, I want to make sure that the terminology we use is clear for everyone. If you recall, we can think of this as having two separate parts here, and we can color code those. The first part we see here, the 2.5, <clears throat> is something referred to as the coefficient. This is the number that contains all of the useful information that we actually measured. These are where our significant digits live. One of the reasons it's called scientific notation is because it focuses on the science part of the number as opposed to the mathematical components as well. Speaking of which, the second part of the number over here is what we'll call the exponential term. This is where we keep all of our placeholder zeros. If you recall from <clears throat> discussions on the uh, significant digits, these placeholder zeros don't really carry any information for us aside from the fact that they're needed for the mathematics to work properly. They don't tell us anything about the actual measurement. Therefore, we squish them all into this exponential term, and we kind of keep them out of the way so we can focus on the term over here that's much more valuable. Now that we're all on the same page with terminology, let's talk about the actual rules for doing addition and subtraction. Unlike multiplication and division, we have to do some steps beforehand before we can actually do these calculations. And the thing that we really have to watch out for is right here. This is the big problem. Whatever your exponential term is, whatever your power of 10 is, it has to be the same in both terms to be able to add or subtract them together. The rationale behind this is when you do regular addition, for example, if we were going to add the number 100.0 to the number 1.0, we would certainly not line things up this way. You know back from math from many, many years ago that to add these things properly, your decimal places have to be lined up. We want the ones column in this number to match up with the ones column in this number. So this absolutely won't work. We would set things up this way. We would say 100.0, and we would add that to 1.0, and then we'd be able to get a reasonable answer. And this lining up of terms here is exactly what we're doing when we take the extra time to make sure that all of our powers in 10 have the same exponent. Uh, and that's the thing we have to watch out for. Like I said, I think this will be clear when we talk about it in, um, in our example in a second. Once you've made that change, however, and once you've got those power of 10s to match, then your life is much, much easier. So once those powers of 10s match, you're just going to add or subtract your coefficient term just like you would normally add or subtract things, and things are going to be very simple at that point. Just like with multiplication and division, though, you always got to check at the end. Your coefficient has to be between the numbers 1 and 9.999 repeating. If you are outside of that range, we need to make some final adjustments to get our number back in. The good news is that in this particular type of calculation, this happens much less frequently, uh, and it won't be something you have to worry about. This is a bigger problem when we deal with multiplication and division. Let's take a look at an example, and I'm hoping some of the things we just talked about will be a little bit clearer. Uh, in this particular problem, we see we've got two terms here, 4.0 times 10 to the 46th added to 5.0 times 10 to the 45th. Uh, if you look very closely, um, these exponential terms, the powers of 10, do not match. We've got 46 and 45. Therefore, we cannot simply add the 4 and the 5 together to get the answer of 9. We've got to make these match first. I have a real quick and easy trick for doing that. Uh, you always want to make the smaller power bigger. You want to match up to the big one. To get to that, we have 10 to the 45th. 10 to the 45th is really 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, 45 times. If we take that and multiply it by 10 one more time, we're going to end up with 10 to the 46th, and those things will match. However, we can't just multiply this term by 10 and expect the value to stay the same. We've got to undo that on the other side of the number 
and then we've got to divide this side by 10, giving us the answer of 0 0.5 times 10 to the 46th. We can now add that to 4.0 times 10 to the 46th. Our exponential terms now match, which means we can do the math. And we're simply going to add the 4.0 to the 0.5 over here. We're going to get the answer of 4.5 times 10 to the 46th. And notice the exponential term you ended up with carries its way down into the answer. So this would be our final answer. Check it real quick. Does the 4.5 in between the range of 1 and 10? It most certainly is, which means we are done with this one. If you don't believe me, if you think that um, something went wrong here, take out your calculator right now, plug these two numbers in, and see if you get an answer that matches. But I'm pretty sure you're going to find something that uh, matches what we talked about. Let's try a second example. Uh, in this case, it's going to be a subtraction problem that we're going to try. Um, here, we have 4.0 times 10 to the 11th minus 6.0 times 10 to the 12th. Uh, we're going to have the same exact problems. These powers of 10 do not match one another. We've got an 11 over here and a 12. You always want to take the smaller one and make it bigger, and it's the same situation. We're going to take this 10 to the 11th and multiply it by 10. That's going to add one more 10 in, making it 10 to the 12th. But then we have to do the opposite over here. We've got to divide this side by 10, giving us the answer of 0 0.4 times 10 to the 12th. Let's bring down our other term here. 6.0 times 10 to the 12th. We've gotten our exponential terms to match. Now it's simply a matter of actually doing the math. 0.4 divided by, or sub, sorry, subtracted by 6.0 uh, is going to get us the answer of negative 5.6 times 10 to the 12th. We bring down the powers and we simply subtract the front numbers. Notice that the fact that we got a negative answer here. Nothing special happened. We simply did math like we normally would do, 0.4 minus 6.0, and we just got a negative value. It shouldn't change any of the rules, shouldn't change anything. So everything still applies. Uh, our answer is between the numbers 1 and 10, so we're, we're done with this guy, and we're completed. Again, don't hesitate to check with your calculator to make sure that it agrees with the answers that we're getting. At this point, I think it's in your uh, best interest to actually practice a couple of these. Uh, here's a couple examples of examples of some addition problems as well as some subtraction problems with varying levels of difficulty. Uh, a couple of them do require you to change uh, the answer and adjust it to meet the range and one of them at least requires you to adjust your um, exponential term twice in order to be able to add things so watch out for that one. You should pause the video at this point, try these problems and then in the next slide we'll have some answers. Here are the answers to the practice problems you hopefully just worked on. Uh, make sure you check your work to uh, make sure things match up. If something doesn't make a lot of sense, uh, or if you're not sure why changes were made, please come and see me ASAP. We'll definitely be able to work it out. Likewise, please uh, feel free to explore the rest of my site. There are more practice problems and tutorials on scientific notation uh, to allow you to develop these skills further.